think you have to. Matthew chapter 21. Okay. And let's, let's look at verse 12. Because this is the, this is the great problem. Uh, uh, when I say problem, I want to say this is the manifestation of what we're living is the manifestation of this problem is what I want to say. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Um, verse 12 of Matthew, uh, 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 Matthew 21, Matthew chapter 21, verse 12 says, And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast all of them out. Are y'all there? Amen. Jesus went into the temple, into the church, cast all of them out. Say them. Them, them is the problem. Amen. Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. G G you cast out problems. So let's see what Jesus was casting out. Because them is the problem. Are y'all there? The problem wasn't what they had. It was them. them. <laughs> what, what they were selling is them. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so, and so and, uh, uh, well, I'll read it. And cast all of them out. Them that sold and bought in the temple. Say sold and bought. Sold and bought. Merchandise. They merchandise it in the temple and overthrew the table of the money changers and the, and the seats of them that sold doves. Now, the, they were the problem because they had, they had turned something that was supposed to be holy into a way of making money. And that's the, the money changers would sit in the temple because back then you had to take and buy an animal and slaughter that animal and, and, and pull the blood out for atonement for your sin. And so they would sit there in the temple like an ATM machine. Yep. And basically they were, they were selling atonement. They were selling forgiveness. Are y'all there? And, 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 Jesus, and Jesus said, y'all mark, y'all, 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 y'all making money off of the, uh, off of the sins of the people. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. And the money changers made sure that you had the correct currency. If you came from another nation, they had you, they had that currency, or they made sure they gave you the change back from uh, purchasing one of their turtle doves or whatever it was, animal they were selling inside of the church. So the church had not been a place where people could come and be delivered or free or hear the word of God. The church had become a place of merchandise. And as long as people, listen, the people didn't throw them out. Jesus did. As long as the people could come and purchase forgiveness, they was okay with it. Talk to me. As long as people could purchase forgiveness, they're fine. That's what the Catholic church is built upon. You can purchase your way out of hell, they say. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So we, this, script, this chapter, we spent a lot of time looking at their money changes. Yeah. Right? Amen. Because we know they are the problem. They are the one that set up the racket. Say amen. amen. But I always said, why didn't nobody else say nothing? Amen. The people was okay with that system. Amen. Because it allowed me to go do what I want to do. As long as I seen the money changer to sell me a dove to kill the bread the blood, I could I could do all the wrong living Amen. I wanted to. So the church was no longer a place for me to come and repent before God. The church was a place for me to come and find my hookup. So no longer was I coming to God's house for God. I'm coming looking for the man that has a uh, that has a. I don't want to say another, an easier way. Yeah, on, Not sacrificing me, right. sacrificing that. Yes. Yes. Talk to me. Amen. So yeah, I don't mind killing an animal as long as I don't kill my own flesh. Wow. I don't mind killing that animal as long as I don't die, as long as I don't got to stop sinning. Amen. Come on, talk to me. Amen. So we do a lot of work Looking at the money changes because they are the problem. Amen. But we never think about the people. Amen. That was a system that the people obviously was okay with. Amen. 
and this is the modern day. Now, there are those who are standing there telling people, if you go in the temple and you take a, a whatever type of, this is Old Testament now. We know they was, they was doing Old Testament stuff. If you take that dove to atone for your sin, but then you, in, but then you, in your heart, you know I'm going to go right back out and intentionally do that sin, then you just killing birds. Oh, ain't that a good title? You just killing birds. Because there's nothing, that blood that you are using as a substitute for your sin can't substitute something you ain't stopped yet. Oh, I don't want to talk to me. If I'm going to use this bird to substitute my fornication, after this bird died, no more. Ah, that's Old Testament stuff. But you get the gist. Are y'all there? Come on, talk to me. So as much as we see Jesus beat these guys, and this is where you see a real Jesus with, with a stick beat these guys. Not that homosexual looking person that they come. Jesus was a man and he beat them guys out of the temple. He beat them to the point that they were like, what's wrong with you? And they didn't try him. Think about that. It was a more than one man. They didn't try him. You know you're going to fight over your money, but they did not try him. Because he disrespected the money. Throw the, the money's on the ground. Now, you know you're going to fight over your money. They looked at him like, man, this guy, he wasn't no coward. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? But do y'all see that the money changes were the problem, but the people needed them as much as the money changes needed them? We need y'all to have this easy way for us because we have no intentions of living God's law. So it's okay that you sit in the temple and shortstop us from getting our heart right with God for real. You don't nobody want to talk about this. Now, if I really want to break this down and come on into the modern day, let's go all the way into the modern day. This would be where people come and they bring their sacrifice. It could be their money their offerings, their tithe, or even their time, and they feel that is my turtle dove. I went to church. I go to church. I'm on the deacon board. I'm on the usher board. I, grandmama saved. You ain't doing nothing but killing birds. Say amen. I went down to the altar. I said I was sorry for what I did, but I went back to it. I'm still in it. Killing, you just killing birds. And the man preaching is that money changer that understands that I got to keep you coming back to me. Oh, y'all ain't got. I got to keep you coming back to me. So I keep selling you forgiveness by making you believe that this little penance you're doing, God is saying he's seeing that instead of saying, no, come all the way out of it. Come all the way out. And when you come all the way out, your turtle dove going to count. Your sacrifice going to count. Your forgive me, Lord, going to count. Your I repent going to count. But right now, oh, ain't, but right now you just killing birds. Killing birds. And y'all know, y'all know it. Y'all know you see it. No matter how much church, no matter how big a church is, how small a church is, no matter how many members, no matter how much money, no matter how rich, no matter how poor, you see that whatever they do at that altar does not last. All the tears, the crying, the shaking of hands, the water they go down in does not last. And it's a system. Of the money changes. Are y'all there? Amen. And that system has served well. God has even God has even saved some people under that system. God will use anything. He'll use it, even though it's not his best. He'll, but if somebody needs to get saved, they can say he'll use it. 
That's why a lot of people get saved under that system. They always have a long and a, there's more to God. There's more to God. And they'll be always looking like there's more. I know there's more to God than this. I know there's more. I know there gotta be more. They'll be, they be forever wanting to see more of God or hear something more about God. But that's not the job of the money changers. Because, because like any business that is going to live, I need you to come back. The comeback is what I'm about. I'm about you coming back to me. Therefore, I must make sure that you, you, therefore, I must minister to you a word that does not get you that I must minister a word that clears your conscience, but does not make you clean. Because it's your dirty that run you to God. It's your stink that made you come to church. It's your mess that make you come to church. You didn't come to church because you love God. You was going through some mess. You, it was some stink. But when you come in your stink, I must... Bring your atonement. Amen. And this is why you see people never grow. Become disciples and stay with God and live a life of the word and be stable and get married and grow on up and find out what I'm called to do. But they live a life of in church, out of church, in relationship, out of relationship, on drugs, off of drugs, in jail, out of jail. And all this time, they keep going, sacrifice. Every time they go to jail, they get, they get their they bad bird. Every, oh, that's a good word. Every time they go out there and, and give their body to somebody that said they weren't going to give it to, they buy a bird. That's because they, they go on atonement. And it becomes an act or an action or a, or a stage play, a theatrical presentation. But there's no power in it. Because there's no true intent that this is my last bird. You ain't got to kill no more birds for me. Y'all want to talk about it. Right, y'all done. Y'all done. Y'all don't want to talk no more. And so because of that, a whole church system, listen to me, the whole church system is set up on that premise, on that foundation. The whole church system, no matter where you go, if, you, if, if it says church, it has this premise that we must provide, we, 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 must, we, 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 must, we must provide you with product for cleansing. Y'all didn't catch it. Y'all ain't even hearing. Y'all ain't with me. I told y'all know this is going out to people beyond y'all, right? Product for cleansing. So if I'm selling you a product, then I must continue to upgrade that product and change the price of it and 1999 you and you ever heard of you bought one galaxy two and then well we got galaxy three well galaxy four well galaxy and people keep running for the new product Thinking that if I think that this new word or this new this new church movement or this new church or this new that's this is an upgrade from the last level of back and forth in God. Now I get, I'll go. This is back and forth 2.0. Y'all not ready for me, man. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so you see people, uh, and, and that's what people do when they go to, oh, let me go to this church over here because this church over here, you know, and they don't know it's all part of the same network. Everybody, all this is connected. Wherever you go, it's stuff, it's same, if same network's going to be there. They just might be, they might be iPhone, they Sprint, they at and but all of them are still connected. It's the, it's, it's the goal is to do the same thing. 
Are y'all, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So this money changing system, let me get on so I can get done. This money changing system, changer system, is what you see now in modern church now. It is, it, it, it's, what would happen, what would happen today, today, if one of us came up with a cure for AIDS and a cure for cancer, and we stood out in the street and threw it out there for free to millions of people, and all you needed to do is one person can get it and give it to the next one and give it to the next one and use it and give it to the next one and use it and give it to the next one use it and give it to the next one. What would happen? You would see the medical industry fold overnight. Pharmaceutical industry fold overnight. Why? Because the 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 the, the the sickness and the disease is what's propping up our sales. You can use sales as money sales or, or sales over boat. It's the wind of our sales. Oh. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Let's, 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 put, let's make it gutter. What would happen if, if we took all the, uh, the Oxycontin and, and we had it free here and we had all the crack and all the heroin and we just threw it out of the street? Drug dealers would lose all their money overnight. What would they do? They would come after you. We got to shut this down. They hurting our profit. This is what I'm trying to show you. Just open your eyes. What would happen if people came into church and they really did get well? They really did get delivered. They really did get healed. They really did get better. They really did get saved. Then there would be no need for all this extra stuff and money that we spend and do. There would be no need for all of this. Are y'all... Are y'all, are y'all understanding what I'm saying? So somebody is profiting off of your sin, off of your falling, off of you always going in and going out and going in and going out. Somebody's profiting. It's the money changers. It's a system that is designed to self, to reciprocate itself. I'm selling you sin products, but I need you to sin. Listen to what. What do you mean sin products? This book is going to get you out seven ways to a breakthrough. This tape is seven ways to get your marriage together. This conference, I guarantee you, you're going to be delivered. I'm selling cleansing products. But these products do no good unless you sin. So I need you to sin and sell my product. Y'all ain't ready for this. This is what church has become. I need you to fornicate. It makes me, it makes my sermon sound spiritual. Talk to me. I need you to have your babies out of wedlock. It makes you depend on the church instead of depend on your man or your home. Nobody wants to talk, right? I need you to have your babies out of wedlock because we'll raise your little boys as homosexuals in the church. I said it. There's a system that is self-feeding. Oh, it's a self-feeding system. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I need you black women to be dysfunctional because y'all women fund ministries. I need you. That's why we got to give you a woman conference. Come on, woman, woman, woman conference. We got to keep you. We got to go after the woman because y'all are the one that spend money. Men don't give nothing. Women are the one that spend money. Amen. Women are travel all over the earth looking for somebody if she believe he's real. Amen. Talk to me. These are the sort that creep into the houses of silly women laden with sin and divers lust. I need you to be in divers lust. Oh. I need you to always be wanting something and wanting a husband. Oh, oh, 
we wanting to be called, wanting to give, wanting a church, wanting a ministry, wanting, wanting. I need you to be wanting to die with lust, many lust, wanting all the time, wanting a pastor, wanting a. Because as long as you wanting and longing and lusting and sinning, I, I can sell you something. I can sell you a product. How many of you all have ever seen that garbage at night, four and three or four in the morning, and they got the best product ever, but you ain't sold at 10 o'clock in the day when people are thinking, you're selling it while these cats up at night can't sleep already, something wrong with them. Look, that's why they're up because they're looking for some, something wrong, and you tell them you got this best product going to make their life better. And all of a sudden, somebody done bought something. What is this stupid thing I done bought? People will buy anything when they're desperate. So your friends keep me, your little domestic friendships, they keep you from being, being strong and growing up, and it makes me needed. So I have to say, that's okay. Do y'all see this cycle? Why people don't teach live right or live all the way for Jesus. Because it is a self-fulfilling machine. It's a self-reciprocal uh, machine. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. The same way that the hospitals will tell you they're there to cure you. And that's where, more, that's where everybody died. Right. Yeah. Most people don't get sick till you went. Yeah. Then you were sick. Not saying sometimes you got to go. Sometimes they, there's things they can't do to help you. I'm not saying that. One of the best things they can do is diagnose. Amen. After that, you pray about it. Amen. They diagnose you. That's what they. That's the good thing. They got the equipment to diagnose you. Why do you think they charge you more for that diagnostic than they did for anything else? Get an EKG and see what I'm talking about. Look at Watch how much EKG costs to get your heart, see if your heart's good. They charge you for the diagnosis. Now, the cure is just some pills. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Do, do, oh, do, do y'all not see this system? And see, and every other, you know, every six months, there's a new, there's a new uh, product on the market. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Every six months, there's a new product on the market. Call it MegaFest. Call it, uh, uh, think like a, uh, be a woman and think like a man. Call it. The, these are just products. These are just. These are just. This is nothing more than Christian products. Amen. Call it. Um, um, y'all know these products because you see them. Y'all. Some of you buy them all the time. Every conference is just a new product, and what are they doing? They're trying to. They know they got to sell that product, and you can't sell me something that I don't need. Would I need your marriage book if my marriage is good? Amen. No. Amen. It's imperative for me that your marriage be bad. Because wow. then you will buy my book. Amen. So it's important for people. Do y'all not? Come on, look at what we see in her. That's why people don't go get better. They don't grow. They, you know, people, you know, I, I, I've, been in, I've been saved a long time. I see people in the church, 10 years, 5 years, 10 years, and they're in and out. They never grow up. They never mature. They never, and you know why? And those are the people that always are running to the money changes. They're always looking. They all, them are the people that run into everybody's product. They're not stable in their own house. They're always running to somewhere else. They're always going to somewhere, conferences. They always got somebody else's books because this is what they don't even know, that they are locked into that machine. That if they would get stable, you get sabotaged. <laughs> Let me move on. Does anybody want to talk about this? Let me get done. I'm going to be done right here. Look at this. Verse 13, it says, and this is the crux of it. And, 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 and Jesus said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. But you have made it a den of these. Prayer is the antithesis of this money-making machine. Y'all didn't catch what I said. You can't make money on prayer. 
Did y'all hear what I said? Amen. Have a prayer conference and see how much money you make. <laughs> Tell people, come on, we gonna, come on, pay to pray. Nobody will show up. Amen. You can't make money on prayer. As a matter of fact, once people pray, they really don't need no conference, no books, no tapes. They don't even need your sermon. Prayer is the answer. So notice what is the least thing that we're doing. Prayer. That's why I said the people didn't have a problem with this exchange system because it was keeping them from the hard labor work of praying. So, I, so, 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 so they look for money change in churches and money change in ministries that will do all the work and give you the dove and give you the, 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 give you the product and they can just live how they want it because they don't have to do no work. Amen. But prayer is work. And, and, and if I'm a work, what I'm going to give you some money for? <laughs> if I'm doing the work, why well, I'm going to pay you to do my own work? Say amen. Because when I begin to pray, the Lord's going to give me my answers and show me what I need to do and then I don't need you. Y'all not there out there. And uh, he said, but mine should be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now, let me read this prophecy. That's part of it. That wasn't a prophecy, actually. <laughs> that was just something I wanted to tell y'all before I tell you, before I set this prophecy up. So I'm just going to get, get done with it quick so we can go. The prophecy is the money changes, the true enemy of the gospel. That's the name of this prophecy that I was going to spread about it. That's saying like a very good title. The money changes will always prop, put profit before process. You hear what I said? Profit before process. Did you hear what I said? That would be like, don't exercise, take a pill. Do you see what I'm saying? Don't do the work. Don't exercise, but take a, you won't lose weight. Don't exercise, take a pill. Well, that's, are y'all see what I'm saying? The pill is profit. The process is what you need to keep the weight off. Y'all got what I'm saying? Okay, this is the current cause of the scandal plague leadership that we now see in the body of Christ. Now listen, the old system, the old system, this money changer system was the old system. The old system when Oral Roberts had it and A.A. A. Allen, some of y'all don't know these people back in the, you know, the late, uh, the early, you know, maybe, you know, 50s, 60s and, you know, back then these people were, uh, had these big tent revivals and big meetings and this is the system that was set up. The, the, the system of, 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 of pay, pray. You come to my tent meeting and I'll heal you and live you and you get paid. That was the system. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That system carried over from these big tent meetings to now we have church, now every message has to be geared towards finances. That's why you can't watch Christian TV. You're always going to feel like I'm disobeying God. You know you disobeyed God. You know God told you to give that. You're like, man, I did God. Did you tell me to give that? I don't know if I should give that or not. God doesn't think twist your arm to give nothing. Amen. The Bible says every man give what he purposed in his heart. If you didn't purpose to give it, before you turned it, don't give it. <laughs> anyway, listen. So, 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 so out of that old system comes the TBNs, the, the Daystar, all of these Christian TVs and many others that came out of that charisma movement. It, ha it has maxed out and exploited formula. In other words, they picked up that same formula that uh, mixing money in the gospel. Are you hearing what I'm saying? What did Jesus tell the disciples? When I send you, don't take no money. Now listen, when I send y'all, don't take no money. Whatever you need is going to be provided from the people you minister to. When you minister to them, they're going to meet your need. But don't you look to take no purse. No way to store nothing. Because if you uh, got that purse, you're going to start looking at that purse and realizing that you can get paid from what you're doing. And then you're not going to go to them with a pure motive, but you're going to go to them based on what you can get. Money changes. So that money changes system transfers the commission of Christ to go ye into all the world and to go ye to who have the money. Yeah. 
Yeah, not ready for me, man. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you don't believe me, try to get a meeting with any one of these big pre preachers and you'll find out you can't get to them. But if you're a millionaire, you can get to them. What did you, this is this is this is the revelation that James was trying to give the church when he said, look, if a poor man come in and he's raggedy, don't make him don't disrespect him and treat him bad. And a rich man come in with a good ring on and you give him a prominent seat. He said, don't have that respect to persons because the money changes spirits going to come in. And the money changes this money changer spirit is the enemy of the true gospel. Because once a person starts focusing on the money, you can't preach the truth. Because it's all about the money. Are y'all there or not there? So this is the movement in the system that we see now. That it's maxed out. Say maxed out. Uh, it's an exploited formula, and, uh, 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 which is really called gift for hire. You remember that Balaam, Balaam, gift for hire. So that means what it is is like we find gifts. I told you the new product. Oh, they are a good preacher, good anointing, powerful. They become, we hire them to go to all the big churches that got the money. Y'all got to understand how this works. They get on the circuit, go to all these big churches, got the money, get rich, and, and, and sell people new products for the money changers who need to keep the people, giving them new just like you know how you would go get joys, but them joys are like the other joys, but you still get them joys, even though they're the same joys, but they, but they, they just knew. But they the same, but they just knew. What the money changers need you to focus on that wanting the new product. The Bible says it like this, that there was a time that when Paul went to Mars Hill and it said they, well, they was up there, didn't know who God was, but they was only coming to hear the new word, the new philosophy. Did y'all hear what I'm saying? So the money changes exploit that in people that wanting to be have everything new or get it first or hear it first. So they got to go buy these uh, uh, people who these products that will sell you a new word or, or a new song or a new anointed voice. And they gather these people and the people are happy and they throw their money. Why? Because they're getting something new and it's a gift for hire system. It is an old wineskin. Now, that system is an old wineskin. It's busting. God can't even put a new movement in it. Don't y'all notice every time we can get a new movement now because it, the, that, that system so busted. God allowed that system as he has allowed other systems until they become completely corrupted. See, now we get into the complete corruption. In other words, it's no longer useful at all. Actually, Satan is starting to be glorified with a lot of this homosexual gospel stuff that's going on now. I said it. The leaven has worked itself thoroughly through the dough. What was the leaven of the Pharisees? They was about money. What was the leaven of the Pharisees when he said, beware the leaven of the Pharisees? They was about money. Are y'all get what I'm saying? So because the Pharisees was all about money and, and looking right, Jesus said, don't y'all get involved in that because once that money changes get in your spirit, it's going to corrupt the true gospel in you. And you will no longer be my preachers. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Amen. Look, it says, and, and the leaven has started working through the dough. Men will, listen, and men will try to prop up the old system by getting the new cart. That's that, that's that you know, how they come up with new gimmicks and tricks, trying to get people to give now. Uh, uh, you see it all the time. I saw this guy. I don't even really want to talk about the brother because I, you know, I ain't going to say his name. But I'm just saying, you know, I don't know what gift this guy got. I don't know what he is. I don't know if he's a gift or not. I just like, bro, what? You too sweet to look like you're talking for God. But I'm saying, you know, I don't understand this new style. Can't God look like a man? <laughs> Can God be manly? Is, is, is it that God can't look like a man? Do we all have to be feminine, prophesying and shimmying and shawling? What's wrong with you? But this is the new style of ministry that you must be effeminate. 
You must be feminine. Why? Because because we need the females. The women are the ones that support ministry. Men is in the street and watching football. They don't pay attention to church. But the women are the ones that want God and always wanting to know something. And so they are the ones that travel and spend the money. So we got to give them what they want. And that's the very reason why all pimps was effeminate. Amen. Women love that pimp to be feminine and frilly like her. And that's why you see these preachers get more feminine and more frilly and more soft and sensitive. Yes, and voices even changing and getting all... You. Yes, why? Because they, they got to sell the product. We got to get, keep that coming in. And because the economy is bad and people don't have the money that they used to have, you know, you get desperate when you're trying to get that dollar because ain't, people ain't just giving dollars like they used to. So they're coming up with gimmicks and tricks and selling you all kinds of oils and holy blood waters and letters and call me call leave your name and I'm gonna call you back with a word and now that that, that brother's show was on five times same show saying that if you call me I'm gonna call you back now that was a recording <laughs> so how do you you know just but but you know what people because I told you that system turtle dove system they like they okay with it. Yeah. Not, they didn't even think of, uh, now common sense would have told me, now listen, if I done, I done been up five nights in a row, you ain't changed this, this is your same uh, 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 um, uh, infomercial, and you telling me that if I call you, you're going to call me back with a personal prophecy. Then why don't I just call you and we talk right now? Because you got a thousand people calling you and you got some pre-made word you giving to everybody. But nobody thought about that. Brothers get rich off that stuff. And, and if you do get a word, the word is very general. I see, I so oh, I see, yes, yes, I see. I see your breakthrough is coming. I, I see, I see the mountains are parting. Yes, 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 it's coming. The mountains are parting, they're parting, they're parting, they're parting. Yes, 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 your pastor even though, your sister, yes. Please. Amen. That's the stuff they doing. And people just, because, because they're interested in the easier way out, They'll, they'll, they'll buy that bird. Y'all got to catch it. They'll buy that bird instead of sitting there saying, now, hi, now wait a minute. I could have said that. Do you know why I have a word for you? If you come to my meeting, and, my, and, I, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and this is a prophetic meeting, did you know I'm going to have a word for you? You know why? You coming because you got a problem. Now, I can tap into that. I can figure that out by you, by, by you being here. You here because you got a problem. Now, sister, 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 I see it on you. I see, see, sister, yeah, 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 yeah. See, the Lord's been, yeah, you've been up, you've been up crying about that problem. Everybody have. Everybody been crying. Yeah, that's probably been worrying. Y'all been seeing it's been worrying you, been worrying you. It's just been on your mind. I seen you pacing back and forth, and the Lord told me to tell you that just in two more days. That's game. That's game. A, a real prophet would tell you, listen, specifically. This is what I saw. You know when you were sitting down that day by that tree and, 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 and that wind blew right there? That's, when, that's how prophets talk. A prophet would tell you, 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 you know your son, well, he's on his way to jail. And you, the straight words, ain't no fluffy, I see, I say, thou say, we say, ye, yay. No, no, Negro. And if you, and, and if, and if you just sow that seed, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. If you so ah, now who, who's doing this? Who's doing this? Ah, ah, you like, what are you screaming for? He ain't saying nothing. And she's all tears and in the flood. There's Elsa's are catching. I'm like, he ain't said it. Then he didn't knock a dude. I ain't saying that people ain't got the power of God to do it, but I mean, come on. I done started up your emotions, got this organ playing, got all this music back here, got this squad. Ooh, yeah, of course you're going to bring your emotion out. And then some of the tricks of it, I, I ain't got, I ain't want to get in this. I got to close, yeah, I, ain't got, I ain't got the time, I ain't really got the, y'all know I'm still recuperating, I ain't got the time for that. 
But you know, one of the ways of, if you see this false stuff, is a person, it's called picking. A person, as they talk and they look at you, and they see what your response is, and say, oh, okay, they, they didn't move on that. If you, don't move, if you move on that, that's why the hardest people to prophesy to are the ones that, right, right. okay, yeah. <laughs> but because you are, you, you hurt because you desperate, you need a word, right? So the minute I call you, it's God. You're going to think it's the minute I call you. That's the Lord. The Lord is, the Lord is going to give me word. <laughs> and then you see they slayed in the floor. And you don't follow back up on that sister to know whether or not that really came to pass. Because, see, real prophet will go get them and, and say, you know what, this is the word I gave them that, to, to, to testify. Did that word happen or not? Hallelujah. I remember that one brother was on, at one time, y'all remember the last Super Bowl? Brother going to prophesy the winner of the Super Bowl. <laughs> Said he was a prophet, and uh, he's, God speaks to him, and in a dream, one of his under, under prophets <laughs> said they had a dream that, uh, who, was, who was playing it? So I can't even remember who it was. Who was it? Now he said, uh, which one he said? One of, one of, I can't remember which one he said going to win. Which one was he said going to win? The, sea, the Seahawks. Was it? Yeah, he said the Broncos is going to win. Said it emphatically. I'm telling you, I'm a man of God. You do not question. I got, I, every, the video's on. You do not question the prophet. And you are, and he, then he come back on her as people start to say, dude, you don't feel, please. You will see that you will never defy the not a prop. Well, that's an easy way to judge whether you are real or not. Let's look. At, let's go to the score, Bob. <laughs> Man, okay, the end of the game was getting down. All right, and you know they got a blowout. Wasn't that a blowout? So everybody, all of the Facebook people I had went to his page, and we got to type it. Brother, I thought you said brother. brother, brother. All of a sudden, retraction. Oh, well, see, you know, sometimes you have to be mindful of the people around you. Because sometimes you can pick up on their spirit, and their spirit may not their spirit may not be accurate. So you know, I must have, I mean, you know, I, mean, I you know, I, you know, I, I must apologize for that because I picked up on the spirit. But all that time he said, I confirmed this is going to happen. This is true. And so of course people let him have it. That's what the body should do. The Bible says two or three prophesy, the rest of y'all judge. The whole problem is who cared? Who won the game? Only glory going to get was you. <laughs> was God going to get glory because you prophesied a game? No, you was. Nobody asked you. <laughs> Nobody asked you. I mean, you had a lot of people that was believing. Now, now you know it was me and some brothers on there letting them have it. Like, no, nah, bro, you, you got to straighten this, bro. You got to get this right. You know, you can't, now you can't come up here to every track. Yeah. Who's on there fighting for him? Women. Women. I believe he's a man of God. And he, you can miss it one time. And, no. Yeah, you can miss it, but that was a big miss. I mean, that was one of the misses where you like, dude, I'm not need to go on the backside of the desert. Anyway, I don't know how I got on that. But that's what I mean by, you know, this that old system where people pay for that. People pay for this brother got big conferences and people pay for this stuff. Let me get done. Are y'all there? Uh so they got the new court with for the art, but they will use the same method to merchandise the glory. The, 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 listen, and I'm done right here. The gather and contain movement that we call the mega church has produced the Laodicean age. Gather, contain. That's what mega church was. Not knocking them, but if you're going to gather them, do something with them. You give me a thousand people, man, it wouldn't be one drug dealer within a mile. Amen. We would preach everything down. Amen. You mean you ain't got nobody and thousands of members? Say amen. amen. 
And up the street from these churches be the worst places. And the people never grow. And I remember one day, me and my wife were watching the video, big mega church members up in Walmart fighting. And they enter, somebody's having a video, and they said, I'm going to tell the bishop on you. These two mega church members are brawl in, in Walmart. And all of them saved. And all of them, they naming the church they go to, the biggest preacher, they naming his name. And, and I'm going to tell the bishop. And they pulling each other's hair out and all that in Walmart. Mega. But it's produced the, the, it, it, the, the, the it's, it's a gather by giving you everything you want. Making you feel comfortable in your sin and contain. Hold you by keep giving you new products. New products and new doves and sacrifice. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bro, tell me you got that on tape. Okay. Hallelujah. I don't, nobody need to get saved on that. I think we saved. If you ain't saved, just be saved right now. Trust the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. Amen. But I do want to pray because we, listen, y'all, we got to wake people up. We got to wake people up. I'm afraid that the church is becoming hell's number one, uh, you know, where, where a person can sit in church now and, and be deceived because we're just not telling people the truth. That God really loves us, that he wants us to live a life of victory by living his word. Amen. Not trying to see what we can get by with. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. This is a word that is so needed for the body of Christ. Y'all know it. If you just think about it, you know it. That's why most, I got, I got thousands of people now on YouTube that's just telling me. They, they know it. Like, man, you, we know it. We know it. The word is strong, man. And we, don't, we used to the sweets, to the sweets and the donuts, but we know that that's what's happening. And, and that's why I say you have, to, you have to be bold in this hour to tell people the truth because you got to care more about their soul. How do you, say, how do you speak up in church and, 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 and people lose their marriages? I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. You know? Now, I'm not saying that people can do what they want to do. If somebody want to leave you, they can leave you. But if, but if you up in the church and, 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 you, and, you, and you're just not hearing the word, you're not hearing anything, you're not hearing come out, you know, then the Bible says, how will they know except they hear? And how will they hear except they have a preacher? You won't, you won't know how to come out of sin until you're convicted of sin. Amen. And the preacher's job is to convict you and make you look, examine your life and say, man, I'm undone. Amen. And before I would risk going to hell over whatever is in my life, I'd rather repent and get it right. And that's one of the reasons why we don't have all time off the calls and you're laying in the floor and I'm praying over you and you falling out. Because I've seen people fall out and lay on the floor and cry and snot and get right up, get in their car, put on their music, go to their house, boyfriend in the bed, <laughs> girlfriend in the bed, club, club music, Greg on, drinks in the refrigerator, never changed, but yet they just snotted and cried and did all that in church. That ain't nothing but turtle doves, it's birds. That stuff's for the birds. <laughs> but for those with a real atonement, when you, when you come up off that altar, you're done. Whatever the Lord says, I don't want it in my life, I don't want it. Whatever I got to change, I'll change it. Whoever I got to walk away from, that's fine. Whatever I got to do over, I'll do over. Anything I got to stop, I'll stop. That's salvation. So, Father, I pray that we have that type. Say, I pray. That I have that type, that have that type of, salvation. of salvation. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.